Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. We are back for yet another trucking vlog, of course. If you did not watch my last video, uh, we had a very interesting situation where I got hit by a rock, my, like my truck did, not me. <laughs> my truck got hit by a rock on the windshield, smashed the windshield, so we are currently at a Freightliner dealership. Our windshield is all good now, and we were waiting for a load, and we just got one, and it is a pickup ASAP and deliver ASAP, so that is sick because we are trying to get home for some home time. I was actually supposed to be home last night to be home for today through uh, the weekend, essentially, but because of the broken glass that didn't work out so now we're just trying to get home as soon as possible so this load allowing that is awesome so i'm gonna go ahead and do my pre-trip and all that and we're gonna get out on the road load is picking up in olympia so about i think it's like 30 something miles south from where i am at currently and then it just picks up as soon as possible and delivers as soon as possible so that's super nice we basically just head down there now pick it up and then we are heading down to halsey to deliver so just south of south of Albany a little bit it's kind of like in between Albany and Eugene so I assume after that we're gonna drive back empty to our headquarters to our yard and that's where we'll shut down so let's get rolling some weird stuff here kind of we're actually only like 30 I think 40 something miles away from where we're supposed to go however due to the routing that I was given by the company we have to backtrack a little bit, so we actually go north on 167, and then we hit 18 and cross over, and then eventually get to five south this way. So we just have to do some kind of weird stuff here instead of just like going south from here and continuing on over to Olympia. Uh, we have to go north first and then south, but not a big deal. It's just weird because the interchange from 167 to 18 is like super weird. I like get off of the freeway and then have to take some really tight weird turns to get to 18. And it is the truck route because it's the same way that I got from 18 to 167 yesterday. But it's just, it's super weird. I don't know why the, the truck routes in Washington seem to be very not truck friendly, I've noticed. So I don't know why they did that to us, but they did and we just got to deal with it. So. That's what we're gonna do, is deal with it. <laughs> our information on our load, in multiple places, says that our load weighs 369 pounds. And I obviously very highly doubt that that is actually the case. I don't know if maybe they just don't didn't have a weight and so they just put in 369. But either way, I thought that was kind of funny because that's now, that's now two loads in a row that I've had a weight that just was absolutely not correct. And then I get there and it's something completely different. So we'll see. I'm hoping it's a really light load so that, that way we don't have to scale it. Um, but I don't think it's gonna be that light. I don't think it's only gonna be 360 pounds, but it is a load of paper and paper products. So I'm hoping that that means it's like toilet paper or something, because those are usually like under 17,000 pounds, at least from my experience. So really keeping my fingers crossed that uh, it'll be like toilet paper or paper towels or something like that because those loads are usually very light. And it would be nice to not have to take the extra time to scale because again, I just want to get home as soon as I can. So see, this is kind of what I mean. Like obviously they, they set it up so that trucks can turn here, right? Because they put that line way back there. But that doesn't mean that the turn isn't still super tight and just like not really truck friendly, you know? It's just weird. The, the way that they set all this up is weird. And then it's the same here. Like this turn just does not seem very truck friendly. So I gotta pull all the way out into the opposite side so that my trailer doesn't cross over the line there. And then on the, if I would have been on the inside, my trailer would have been hitting the, uh, the guardrail, you know? So it's just like there's no, no good setup for any of this stuff, it seems like. Although it is a, little, a pretty little break from the freeway to go through here. So I do kind of like that, at least. <laughs> Alright, and that's saying that's a right only right there, so I need to be over here. I didn't know if it was saying right only like going straight you know like I didn't I couldn't see that underneath the bridge there's only one lane and so I thought maybe it said right turn only isn't like coming up because I do need to make a right after this intersection but that is not the case 
it is one lane that goes straight and then a new lane opens up again that is a right turn only. So that is what we're gonna do. It's nice and cool today, only 55 degrees. I think this is the first time I've seen less than 60 degrees in the entire time of me driving so far, which is only like 12 days, but hey, that's still a while. <laughs> At least it feels like a while. And now we get on to 18 West. And thankfully we're empty because we're about to go up a hill. All right, and then that is our junction. Interstate 5. We want 5 South when we get there. That Camaro is not happy with that person that's kind of blocking the left lane. Alright, and we've got a slow truck coming up, so I'm going to go ahead and get in the middle lane so I don't get blocked. And there goes the Camaro. They finally got their chance to go around and they did so very angrily. Alright, I think I actually just want to stay in this lane, I believe. Because both, both of these lanes go towards I-5. And then I think that one cuts north and this one cuts south. Or maybe both of these cut south and there's like an extension off that goes north, but Either way, I'll just stay in this lane just to be safe. All right, yeah, it looks like I was right. So there's a third lane that opens up and that goes north. And then these two lanes both go south. So I could have just stayed over there or got, I mean, gotten back over once I passed that slow truck, but no harm, no foul. That's, I, I, I gotta say, I never used that saying, no harm, no foul, like ever really. I, and now, for some reason, now that I'm trucking, I say it like almost all the time. I don't, I don't know. I, I maybe I'm not saying it as often as I feel I have, but I feel like I've all, I've said it in almost every single video so far, every single trucking vlog so far. And again, I never ever said it before trucking. So that's weird that all of a sudden now I'm using it all the time. Oh, and look at that. This lane now exits only, so I should have just stayed in the left lane. So there was harm and foul. Got a big oversized crane down there, that's kind of cool. Although maybe not super cool because I think I'm going to be... Oh, I guess he's going a little faster than I thought. I was going to say I'm going to be merging like right at the same time he is. But... Oh, maybe I will. Okay, well, I'll just slow down and get behind him. Obviously, am not. 
not at the shipper yet. But I just got to point out the fact that like I keep going under a bunch of bridges that are like 14 foot six, 14 foot seven, 14 foot like five, four, you know, like somewhere in the, that range, right? And the trailer that we, the trailers that we take, the our dry vans at, at May are 14 feet. And I know that to like any other truck driver that's been doing this for a while, they're like, okay, yeah, you got, you got space, then you're good, right? But like for me, there's a, an, an unsettling, like, it, it is unsettling to me to think about the fact that in, on some of these bridges, there's like, like six inches or five inches or whatever of space between the top of my trailer and a concrete bear, you know, concrete bridge while I'm going 60 miles an hour. Freaks me out a little bit, you know? And I'm sure it probably doesn't freak out like anyone else, or maybe it does, maybe it freaks out everybody else, I don't know, but definitely freaks me out either way. So I don't, I don't know, that's weird to me. I Does anybody else, uh, can any other truck drivers comment like when you're going underneath a bridge that's like a, only a few inches taller than what your, your trailer is, does it freak you out a little bit? Are you like, oh maybe, well, you know, like my thought process is, Oh, if I hit a bump, my trailer's gonna hit the, gonna hit the bridge, or you know, like th that's where my brain goes. I'm like, anything could happen underneath this bridge, and, and I could hit it, you know. But maybe it's just me. I don't know. intersection that does not seem very truck friendly. Make sure I don't tear off the front of that F-150. But again, it's the truck route. This is the way that my instructions from the company tell me to take. So yeah, I don't know why Washington is built like this, but they are and it's weird. Drew from the future here filling in because again, I still was recording before my, I mean, I still was talking before my GoPro was recording. In this clip, I was just talking about how the setup for this facility was just really weird. There was like one sign that said, go this way to the office. And then once you get past that sign, there's nothing, no other signs. And like the, where that one sign was, was as soon as you come through the gate, the office, you have to go all the way around the building to get to the office, which you guys will see in a minute. But either way, they had no other signs aside from that one at the very start that said to go this way. So I was basically just complaining about that in this video. Up <laughs> in such a weird manner. And I am kind of struggling to figure it out. There's a trailer here. And I'm assuming that that's the one I'm gonna take which means I'm also assuming that I can park this one next to it. So for now, that is what we're gonna do. And I just turned the wheel the wrong way. Whoops. Ever. I had to pull forward unnecessarily, but that's okay. Okay, now I'm gonna get out and go see if I can figure out who I need to talk to to... Oh, there's some signs over there and that guy walking in. Okay, well, I'm just gonna leave the truck here. I'm gonna go walk up. I'll, I'll just walk over there, I don't care, and, uh, and figure out where I'm supposed to go. What I said before this one, because I cut myself off again, is I said, you know what I would love? And then this part is if one load, just one would actually go right. Because so far, none have. And I really feel like just having one go right is not too much to ask, but apparently it is. So 
obviously I'm bringing this up for a reason, and that is because I just went into the shipping office, uh, which for, by the way was a much further walk than I thought it was, but that's fine, I, I need the exercise. I walk into the shipping office, give them my PO number, she looks through the papers that she has on her desk and she gives a weird look, and then she's like, what's the number again? And I give her the number again, and she looks through the papers one more time, and then she's like, I'll be right back. She walks off for a little bit, I see her kind of go into a back room, she looks through some more papers, and then she comes back and she says, that PO shipped on the third, so you'll have to contact your dispatcher and uh, see what's going on. It's like, oh, cool, all right, sounds good. So now I once again sit and wait for a response because this is how every single load goes. I get here when I'm supposed to or whatever. I mean, in this case, there was no real pickup time because it was, you know, I just pick up as soon as possible. But anyways, I always get here on time and then I show up, there's some sort of issue and then I sit here and wait for a response from the company and then eventually it gets sorted out after three hours of me sitting and doing nothing. So hopefully it's not three hours today. <sighs> I just wanna go home, man. That's all I want. I just want to go home. I don't understand. But this is nicer. So it doesn't matter that I don't understand. We are now apparently driving empty all the way down to Klatskini, which is, I don't know, a few hundred miles, I mean, hundred and something miles from here. Let's see. Let's see how far away it is. Klatskini is about a hundred miles. It, it's 90 miles from here. So we are picking up in Klatskini and then we are driving that trailer down to our headquarters. I am dropping it at the headquarters and then that's it for me. Somebody else will pick it up and I'll do my home time. So this works out a lot better because I don't have to, um, you know, go past the, the yard and then drive 50 miles back to it empty. Now from here, I just go south down to Klatskini and then head to the head to the yard. So it all worked out, but and it, every time that something has gone wrong, it has worked out in a way that isn't terrible. So I can't complain too much, but man, it's just crazy that I cannot have one single pickup go smoothly. I just don't get it. <laughs> 100 miles to where we're picking up, so probably about two hours, I would assume. And then we're gonna pick it up, take it down to Brooks, which will probably be another two hours or so. And then we will get to go home finally. So probably won't get home until later tonight, but Hey, I'm still gonna be home today, and that is a win in my book. So the way that they want me to go is a little weird. So this says we're only 75 miles away, but that's just because I had to add a marker somewhere to, to have the maps route me the way that May wants me to go. So that is not actually how far away we are. We're 105 miles away in, in total. So we are going to go ahead and finally get rolling go pick up our load. So we've also got some special instructions when we, once we get there, we're supposed to drop our empty at gate six and then bobtail to the main gate. So it's a little weird, but hopefully it'll make sense once we get there. Um, there also is like, you know, don't take this logging road, take this exit, like all that kind of stuff. So hopefully we do the right thing. <laughs> uh, I wrote down my post-it note what to do. So hopefully that is all I need, but for now, fairly simple for now we get on to i5 south and we head south for i don't know i think 60 miles or so before we get to our our exit and then start things start getting weird unfortunately i feel like turning out of here is going to be a little funky as well because i think there's like a little crosswalk like pavement thing so i don't know we'll, we'll have to see how getting out of here ends up being also i hope this gate is just automatic that would be really nice it is, yay. I was like, I don't see a code thing or anything to put in. There was a code to get in, but uh, there's not a code for this, thankfully. Wow, they used to have rail service here, interesting. Okay, and I've got room to hook it hard right here. And then I can go hard left and make it around that concrete thing. They give us plenty of room. Unfortunately though, I got a pedestrian here coming. 
and he's on his phone and is walking nice and slow, but there's a huge line of cars coming from that way, so I guess it doesn't really matter. Oh, is he stopping? Oh, he's putting out a cigarette. So I don't know if he's going to keep walking or if he's stopping there. Okay, he's stopping there. He must work here. Oh, that dog is so cute. All right, so now I can pull forward onto the sidewalk, sort of, even though it's not really a sidewalk. But man, this might take a while, unless somebody lets me in. I got a feeling we're going to be sitting for a minute. Because that is a long line of cars, and it just does not stop. And then I got a feeling that once it finally does stop, it's gonna there's going to be cars coming from this way. So, we'll have to see. This may take a long while. Yeah, it looks like they used to have rail service, and now they turned it into a, a walking trail, of course. Because that's always what happens when they take up the rails, since they just pave over it or lay dirt down and just make it a trail. And I mean, it's cool. Cool that that area gets repurposed. Makes me sad though whenever a place that has rail service no longer has rail service. All right, after these cars, this, I think we're just gonna have to go. Yeah, I'm sorry, Nissan, whatever you are, I gotta go. This is my one shot. All right, success. Oh, okay, that lane does not turn left, but that person just turned left from that lane anyway. Hopefully nobody does that when they're next to me because that would not work out in their favor. Alright, and uh, oh, I need to be in that lane. This poor green <laughs> Nissan, I keep getting in front of them. They're like trying so hard to get past me and I, <laughs> I pull out in front of them and then they try and go around me and I pull back in front of them and they're probably pissed. They're gonna have a fun time speeding around me when they get onto, when we get onto I-5, that's for sure. I gotta do what I gotta do, man. I really do hate when I have to do that, but. Sometimes you gotta be a jerk, unfortunately. Oh, my lights aren't on. <laughs> probably turn those on. I know it's not like dark or anything, but you know what they say, lights on for safety. Why are we slamming on the brakes? Oh, we've got a meter here. Well, that is a good reason to slam on the brakes though. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's only one car per green, but that's fine. People around here just have their own way of doing things. You know what? I get it. waiting for that green Nissan to come flying out and get around me. Oh, they just cut off that person behind me. Oh, they're going to be so mad because I've got an exit only coming up, which means i got to get over again. <laughs> Dude, they are so pissed. Oh, man. I, I don't know what to say. i I got to do what i got to do, you know? I'm sorry that I feel so bad that this person just keeps getting caught, caught in it, but, like, Oh, you know, I, I got to pull out. I mean, there was a gap. I had to take it, right? And then I had to get over to the right to make sure I got onto I-5 South. And then this is an exit only, so I got to make sure I get can get over to stay on I-5. So, I don't know. I don't, I don't, <laughs> I, it sucks that they get, keep getting cut off, but <laughs> I don't, I, there's nothing else I can do. All right. Sorry, Mr. Green Nissan. I apologize. I really do. But... Gotta do what I gotta do. All right, and I said it would be about 60 to 65 miles to our exit, and look at that, it is 65 miles to our exit. So, uh, I guess I'll, I'll catch up with you guys if anything interesting happens. If not, I'll see you when I get to my exit. Oh, there's a car in a ditch. exit so now things get a little weird now we take four west like uh, we go way past where we need to go I don't know why this is the routing that they gave us but we're gonna do what the company says 
which is kind of cool. So this means we get to go through uh, an area that I used to deliver to with Amazon. This was about as far north as we would go. I mean, we would go a little further north than this. Or no. No, this is as far north as we would go. Well, okay. I guess there's like a, a one or two more exits up, but we would hardly ever go there. Whereas like this is like the furthest north, like main area that we would go where we would have like a lot of deliveries. So it's just kind of cool to be back here again because the last time that I was here was for Amazon. So it's cool to be here again. All right, I gotta make a right here. Wow, this is, I don't know why they routed me this way. I don't even know if this is a truck route. I don't think I've ever seen it. Oh, it is a truck route. Okay, weird. Well, that makes me feel better at least that I got to see a sign that says that this is a truck route. Oh, it's turning onto a one way, so that's nice. Wow, that is a tight turn though. All right, and we're good. And we gotta stay in this lane and we make a left. And we're gonna have to swing way wide. Hopefully nobody comes into that inner lane because if they did, they're gonna get hit by my trailer. There was no way that I was gonna be able to not cover off that lane with the trailer. No way at all. And now we go over this cool bridge. And then we also cross some train tracks. So we'll get to see some trains potentially. My dash cam stuff is falling again because it tends to do that a lot. There's no good place to like latch it in. I almost wish I would have just put the dash cam up in this corner or something instead, but I like it in the middle. It gets a better better view, I feel like, from the middle. So there's the train tracks. No trains coming. Alright, 14 foot 7 at that corner, so we're plenty good. Man, that is a sweet view of the river. Oh, there is a train. There's an Amtrak. Oh, and I crossed over that Amtrak actually in uh, Chehalis. Or Chehalis. Chehalis? However you say it. I crossed over it there. So that's crazy that that uh, driving a truck takes the same amount of time that taking an Amtrak would. That is pretty wild. All right. And then four west in the right lane. That is us. Right lane must turn right. And that is a truck route. Perfect. Another, another confirmation that we're still going the right way. Love that. Now we go on this for a little ways. It looks like at least two miles, but in two miles it's telling us to go straight. So I'm assuming that means even further than that. So we are chilling for a little bit. I hate this turn. Even in the box truck, I hated it. And in this truck, it's gonna be atrocious. But thankfully, those people that are in the left turn lane go first, and then I go. So, I'm worried about this curb, though. This curb is not going to be ideal. I'm honestly, I know we're not supposed to, like, swing right before a turn, but I think I'm going to have to. Just clear it. All right, we're good. Now the next part of this drive is really pretty, so I'm glad that you guys will get to experience that. We also pass by like a big industrial area where there's lots of rail service that, that goes on. So the nerd in me that likes trains is also very happy driving through this area. of you are also train nerds you'll hopefully get some enjoyment maybe we'll see a train moving I don't know it's a uh, it's all serviced by a short line and I don't know usually short lines in this area are like off for the day by oh I guess it's only three o'clock never mind I was gonna say they're usually off for the day by like five o'clock but it is nowhere near that time yet so hopefully we'll get to see some action there's all kinds of cool wetlands over here, like all kinds of stuff growing in the water. It's really cool looking. Truck's entering a roadway. I'm already on the roadway. That was a dumb 
joke. I like making dumb jokes. Better get used to them if you plan on sticking around. Oh, also, this house is super cool. They've got all kinds of cool uh, memorabilia and knickknacks and stuff. They've got a little old locomotive. It's pretty sick. I don't know how good of a view you can get of it while I'm going past it, but it is pretty cool. They've got all kinds of cool stuff. I like the little, I, I assume it's like a fake storefront. I don't know if that's actually a building that you can go inside, but it looks really cool. It looks like a, like a place that would be at a mini golf course, you know, the way that everything is set up. And I think that's super cool. Here's where the tracks end for the short line. Well, it kind of loops around, but they don't use this section anymore, I don't think. Because um, there used to be some sort of business there, but obviously that is completely gone. It's all been flattened out. This is the last section that they use. And they've got some cars stored there right now. I will say one bummer thing about going this way, though, is that this way always smells so bad. Which, lucky for you guys, you won't get to experience that. You only get to experience the good parts, which is how cool this area looks. But I get to experience the bad part, which is how terrible this area smells. And speaking of which, I'm going to roll up the windows so that hopefully I can smell it at least just a little less. <laughs> and then this place off to my left is also rail serviced, but the way that they get to that side is like way down. So they go across the, the road, like way down there, go way out and around a bunch of stuff and then loop back in to get into uh, to servicing this area. I am not seeing the train. Usually I see it over servicing that place or somewhere along here, but I am not seeing it. So I don't know if we're gonna see it today. This is the main place that they service is this big industry here, Weyerhaeuser. And then these are the tracks that it crosses to get to that other side and get to that other place that I was just talking about. So you can kind of see the tracks go way down back that way just to get back to that same place. It's really weird. Oh, and the train is there. And there it is, moving some train cars. Oh, we're not gonna get to see the, the switchers. They're super cool. And of course, it's gonna be blocked by other train cars. But that is kinda cool that we got to see it, like I said. I didn't, I started to think that we weren't going to, but sure enough, it is servicing the, the buildings right now. And then here's their like main yard for the, for the short line is right here. And then they, get an outbound set up and then take them down to interchange with BNSF. So it's a pretty cool little area, pretty cool little short line. And this is not the only areas that they service either, but this is the main one, at least that I'm aware of. I'm no pro on any of this. This is all my speculation and just from what I've seen from all the times I've driven past. So I could be wrong on any of this. Take it all with a grain of salt. <laughs> All right, now we get on to 433 South and cross over into Oregon, which is funny. We're gonna cross over into Oregon and pick up and then cross right back over into Washington to head back. And we have got a green light. Oh, and there's another May truck right down there. And this lane immediately ends, so I'm just gonna take up both lanes and here you will get an idea of just how massive this operation at Weyerhaeuser is. There is a lot of logs that go in and come out of this place. And then off to the left, we've got a big steel mill. We've got like a windmill manufacturing place. Oh, there's actually no windmill blades there. Normally that big empty lot over there is all filled with windmill blades, but right now it is not. So that's weird. I wonder if that place got closed down or if they just don't have anything going on right now or what. Interesting. Very interesting. I have never seen that empty. I've never even seen it like half empty. It's always packed full of windmill blades. And then we cross over to the Oregon side. 
side and there's more industry over here where they're making plywood and stuff like that and then I don't know what this building is but they also have rail service so it's kind of cool all these places have rail service and of course obviously being on the other side of the river these are serviced by a different short line these are uh, serviced by uh, Portland and Western and the other ones are by like Mount Rainier Scenic Railway or something like that some along those lines but yeah you can see the rails going into the building it's really cool it is a very cool operation I say a lot of things are very cool, but that's because there is a lot of things that are very cool. And I don't have a lot of descriptive words aside from that, so I just use that one as much as I can. <laughs> and then the rails, as you can kind of see there, go all the way to Clatskanie, which is where we're going. And Portland and Western does service all the way out to Clatskanie. They actually, I think they used to service all the way out to Astoria, but now the tracks have been dug up, I think, past, past Clatskanie. I could, again, be wrong, but from what I have seen when I drove out all the way out to Astoria, the last I saw of the tracks that were, like, not completely grown over with vegetation uh, was in Clatskanie. Now we go up this hill, and there's a vista point with a super cool view. I am actually going to pull off into real quick so that one you guys can see how cool the view is and then two so that I can grab something to eat because I'm hungry I'm just going to grab some chips or something and there's two viewpoints so I think we'll go past this one eh nah we'll stop at this one this one will be good enough we are just going to pull off into the viewpoint and take a quick break. You can kind of see the view. It's pretty sick. So obviously I gotta keep moving, but I'll get one good uh, one good walk over here so that I can use something for the thumbnail. There we've got it. There's our thumbnail. So now I'm gonna grab a snack and we're gonna get back on the road and I'm gonna let you guys enjoy some dash cam footage. I'll catch up with you on the GoPro once we're actually at the shipper, unless something comes up that is worthy of, no. <laughs> you guys down now that we are on the property and I will update you guys when I've got one so we drop off our empty over in this yard over here and then once we've uh, done that our loaded trailers over here however I have to sweep out this trailer before I drop it so well I mean I guess not necessarily before I drop it but yeah I have to I have to sweep it out before I completely leave it Oh, and then I just realized they told me to slide my tandems while I was uh, at the thing, and I did not do that. So I guess I'm sliding my tandems over here instead. Whoops. Sorry about that, people. We're just going to take the first open spot that is easy for me to get to. There's a bunch of spots over here, so all right, we'll just park it over here. Could just park it right next to this Chima one. I think I'll do that. Make my life nice and easy. I got plenty of room to work with on that side. Alright, and we're just 
gonna kind of back this thing in to wherever it lands and then we'll pull back forward and fix it and get closer to that Chima trailer. sweet. We can actually probably get a little closer if we want to here. There we go. And then now we just go straight back. Alright, and now I'll get out and I'll slide the tandems. Swept it out and all that. And now we look for trailer 6508. And it is over here somewhere. It smells so bad. 6554, 6678, 6508, there it is. And it's all by its lonesome. Not really, but like all these ones are stacked right next to each other and then this one's got some space around it. So that's kind of nice. And the ground doesn't look too terrible near it. Where I dropped the other one, I accidentally dropped it like right in a puddle. Um, so obviously that was a bit annoying trying to crank the handle whilst trying to also straddle a bunch of water um, but it was fine and then I obviously once I had dropped the trailer I wanted to make sure that it wasn't gonna sink into the ground at all and it did not it did not sink at all so I didn't pull the truck out fully from underneath it I, I kept the frame underneath it and then you know got out from under it I mean you know got it so that it wasn't relying on the weight of my truck anymore got out so that, that way if it did fall I had the frame underneath it to catch it um, but it was not a problem at all just make sure we're actually lined up here and that looks a little low so I am going to put it in low gear and crank it up just a little bit this handle kind of sucks. All right, that should be good. All right, we are good. So now we actually get it all hooked up. Of course, I immediately fall into a puddle. All right. Get underneath here. Yep, locking jaws are around. We're good there. He's hooked up. Trip the trailer. My goodness, dude, it smells so bad. Oh my god, it smells awful. We have now sealed the trailer and I'm sending my like loaded stuff and then we're gonna get back on the road. We are all set to get rolling and we've got 111 miles. So I estimate that'll probably take us about two and a half hours. Let's get moving. I got my wish. I said I wanted just one load. Like I wanted one shipping, uh, one experience at a shipper to go smoothly. And that one did. That experience went very smoothly. I mean, I had to like do some extra stuff. You know, I had to sweep out the trailer and stuff like that. But the actual experience was fine. I went up to the, the 
you know, guard check. They knew exactly what my load was. They knew which trailer I was taking, all that kind of stuff. And then when I got to the exit, they were like, all right, cool, you're all good to go, have a good one. So I will say, although it took a while, you know, sweeping out the trailer and dumping it all and, you know, getting hooked up to the new trailer while trying to avoid water and all that kind of stuff. Although it took a while, it did go smoothly. So I am very, very happy about that. And now all we do, we drive south uh, down to our headquarters and then drop the trailer and then I go for my home time. So we're looking good. headquarters obviously it is dark so I will get this trailer unhooked and then talk to you guys in a minute I apparently did not end up talking to you guys in a minute because that was the last clip that I had recorded until I started my next vlog so sorry about that but uh, I did end up just doing basically what I said I just I don't know why I'm pointing I'm pointing at the computer because I'm editing it right now um, <laughs> anyways I did end up doing exactly what I said. I dropped the, the trailer and then uh, I parked and went home for my home time, which I guess it makes sense why I didn't record the outro clip. I was very excited to go home after uh, all the things that had happened on, happened on this outing, we'll say. So that said, this is now the outro. I hope you guys greatly enjoyed watching. If you made it this far, I greatly, greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching this far. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It helps the channel a bunch. I cannot say thank you enough for those of you that do comment and like all the videos and stuff and watch all the way through. It helps the algorithm a ton. And again, I just really, really appreciate all the support. All the feedback so far has been wonderful and I just cannot thank you enough. So thank you guys, thank you guys, thank you guys, and hopefully I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.